whatever challenges you're facing, understand, whoever you are, that there's a mighty weapon. That is the weapon of the name of Jesus, the weapon of the word of God, the weapon of the blood of Jesus Christ. They never fail at all in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Okay. It is such a pleasure to have you all again tonight, this wonderful Wednesday, the 17th of March, 2021. You are all blessed and you're welcome to tonight's, to today's service in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So um, I'd say once again, God bless you and uh, you are blessed by the special grace of God and to be here as well. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, my name is Clifford uh, Morrigan, God's Minister of Miracles at Lighthouse Gospel Ministries here in Brentwood in Essex. Uh, Lighthouse Gospel Ministries is an evangelistic outreach ministry. Uh, we have been ordained and commissioned by the Lord Jesus Christ himself to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and uh, with a demonstration of the person and the power of the Holy Spirit, you know, uh, and uh, so that people will be reconciled to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And that is what you know, the ministry is about, that people would be then reconciled to who? To God in the name of Jesus Christ. So it is a ministry of reconciliation. It is not a ministry of condemnation. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, so we do not condemn you, whoever you are. And um, we are I'm also um, delighted that um, I have, and we have uh, people of other uh, faiths that also tune in to this service, to these programs, and watch them as well. And um, I want to uh, honor you that, uh, that have been tuning in as well. And uh, I know that you know, Jesus himself, who is the savior of humanity, uh, as we keep praying, he will certainly save you and your household as well in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, and um, so we are we're glad to have you wherever you are watching from. We are glad to have you and every one of you as well who have uh, uh, taken the time to tune in to this service. Just to let you also know that we are streaming live from four platforms and that is the um, uh, Lighthouse Gospel Ministries uh, Facebook page as well as uh, our Instagram page which is the Lighthouse Gospel Ministries Instagram page. Uh, we're also streaming from our YouTube channel which is the Lighthouse Gospel Ministries YouTube channel as well as my own personal Facebook page which is Clifford O'Morrigan. Uh, as well, so uh, please avail yourself of these, any of these channels or these platforms to catch this service and also they are available, uh, these messages are also available there, you can also watch them for those of you on Instagram, on IGTV, others as well, on Facebook they're there, YouTube they're there as well, so and we're also having some of these messages also being edited as well, because of course what is happening right now is live, so it's unedited, so Nothing has been edited at all, so praise God for that. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Again, once again, I want to appreciate you all for being a part of this service again. And I trust that you have been blessed. You have been blessed. I know you have been blessed. And Jesus has been exalted in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Right, so uh, this is, we only talk about good news here. And the good news is who? It's about Jesus. That's all we talk about. No, so here's the reason for the season. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, um, so now without wasting time, I want to quickly go into the um, message that, um, uh, which is the, is the continuation of what we have been, you know, talking about. I'm going to get my, yeah, it's okay, fine. Uh, it's a continuation of the message which, you, which we've been working on um, for the last, say, four, four weeks or so, and uh, that is the, on spiritual warfare, uh, <coughs> excuse me, with a special emphasis on the weapons of our warfare, all right? The weapons of our warfare, this is the part three of that weapons of our warfare, amen? Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Um, now, I've uh, been talking about this. Now, some of the things I'm going to be speaking about Today's, in today's um, service, um, I have sort of discussed it uh, previously in one of the messages that was preached a couple of weeks ago on the significance of the blood of Jesus Christ, okay? The significance of the blood of Jesus Christ, part four. The significance of the blood of Jesus Christ, part four. Uh, we just had that um, just slightly edited and it's now available on YouTube. So please, please, please. Uh, it's really, really powerful. I mean, certain things were revealed there as well and I would really... I um, encourage you to please, um, you know, go there and take time to listen to it. 
as well. And sometimes I even listen, I listen to the message, I'm like, oh wow, I didn't know where that came from, you know. So that's because it's not me, it's, it's the Lord Jesus Christ, it's the Holy Spirit doing it. All right, praise God. Now, now last week, you know, Wednesday, again, just to say very quickly that war, we are in a warfare, okay? We are in a war, all right? Humanity is engaged in a war. Now, whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not, <laughs> it is true. Humanity is engaged in a war, okay? All right, praise God. What kind of a war? It is a war, it's a spiritual war. Okay, it's a spiritual war, and uh, this is what we want to look at as well. Now, what is war? War is uh, the conflict uh, carried on by force of arms. That is what war is. It's a conflict carried on by what force of arms? Yeah, so there must be some kind of arms being used uh, now. And uh, very quickly, uh, I have to rush it now as well because we have such so much to cover. Uh, weapon. What's a weapon? Weapon is any instrument. Or, or device for use in attack or defense. A weapon is any instrument or device for use in what? In attack or in defense, okay, all right? In, in combat, for attack or for use in defense or in, in well, for use for attack, any weapon or device for use in attack, for, for use in attack or defense in what? In combat, fighting or war. So those are just you know, some, these are little bits of uh, definitions. I just want to give us an introduction and just you know, to put out the way. Now, um, we, like I said, two, the first weapon that we looked at was the weapon of the name of Jesus Christ. Very powerful. That is one of the. That is one weapon. Okay, we looked at that about uh, two weeks ago. Last week we looked at the weapon of the Word of God. Okay, please, especially if you if you if you missed any of these, I would please 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 encourage you. If you are on Instagram, just um, go on. You can go on our. Is there, it's the messages there, it would really bless you, trust me. Uh, on Facebook, on YouTube, yeah, the messages are there, please. So feel free to really uh, access this information, very, very important. Um, so, um, and that is, we looked at the weapon of the name of Jesus, the word of God, and today we are looking at the weapon of the blood of Jesus Christ, okay? The blood of Jesus Christ, that is a powerful weapon, it's a very, very potent weapon. And like I, 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 like I said, I, I, I talked about that a bit on the significance uh, of the blood of Jesus Christ, part four. Please, you know, also um, look, look at that as well, all right? Now, when we talk about, you know, spiritual, what we're we talking about now, if, if you go to the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter six, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 says something there. Uh, turn with me in your Bibles. Please, 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 please. I want to make a special request, please. All right, yeah? Um, come with your Bibles. Especially for those of you who are Christians, all right? Please have your Bibles with you. If you are not a Christian, not to worry. Um, just pay attention and listen, and I'm sure you're going to be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. All right, yeah? Okay, all right? Okay. Um, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Now, these are the satanic forces that we are fighting against, or rather, that are fighting us. Okay? They are fighting humanity, but majority of people don't know. Okay? Majority of people don't know, sadly. Some know, but don't really know what, what to do about it. Okay? Yeah. Uh, so, they are, these, are the, these are the forces of the kingdom of darkness that we are fighting against, all right? Or can I say they are fighting us, and so we are involved in warfare. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, um, I want you to please understand that you know, we are fighting a very formidable enemy, okay? Yeah. We are fighting a very formidable enemy. And... Um, and it's important to know that you know, no matter how formidable these enemies are, we have the victory over them through who? Through Jesus Christ. Amen. All right? Now, you can't fight and you, you can't fight something you cannot see, can you? An invisible force, you can't fight it. You can't, you can't see an invisible force, so you can't really fight it. How are you going to fight it? It comes from, you can knock you on the head and then it knocks you on the, you know, from, it hits you on the back as well and whatever it is, you can't, you can't fight it. You see, now. So you, so, but, but, but you need to understand how do we then fight these invisible forces that are there. They are invisible, but yet, you know, their destructive power, what they are doing is so crystal clear, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Praise God. Hallelujah. And uh, so, I mean, they have, they, there's so many um, uh, sort of uh, testimonies I can go into, but I, because of time, 
I, I will probably just you know, keep that you know, for now and uh, really go straight into the word as well. Now, um, so like I said, now these, these, are, these are the forces that we are engaged with. Now, if you go to the book of you know, 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18, 1 Timothy 1, 18. 1 Timothy 1, 18. I, I'm, I'm going to try to read this 1 Timothy 1, 18 also in the, ampli in the, uh, in the New Living Translation. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18. Um, it says, uh, Timothy, my son, here are my instructions for you. Based on the prophetic words spoken about you earlier, may they help you fight well in the Lord's world battle. May they help you fight well in the Lord's battle. Now, the, King, the New King James Version says, This charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the good warfare. That by them you may wage the good what? warfare. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So there's a warfare. All right? Yeah. Uh -huh. A warfare that is being raged by the evil ones against humanity. Now, it is for those of us who are in Christ, who are able to have the victory. The Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, it says, Thanks be to God, who always causes us to do what? To triumph. I'll read from the New King James Version. The New King James Version says, uh, Now, thanks be to God, who always leads us in triumph in Christ who always leads us in triumph, or in who? In Christ. And through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. And through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. Now, it is true. this is the knowledge I'm bringing. It's the knowledge of who? It's the knowledge of Christ. So, so by the grace of God, it has been diffused, okay? Uh, uh, the knowledge of Christ has been diffused in every place, in every place, wherever you're watching this. It is because God continues to give me and you, okay, victory. Always, always. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's also important. It's also important that you know this. So um, I'm just trying to set the stage, you know, here for the blood of Jesus Christ. We're looking at spiritual warfare, particularly the weapon of our warfare. What is the weapon that we are using to fight this particular spiritual battle? What do you use to fight this spiritual battle? Every war... There is a bat. There is a, there, there is in every kind of war or warfare, uh, weapons are used. In every form of combat, weapons are used. All right. Yeah. So, what is the weapon? What is the weapon that you you need? What weapon do you need? Are you going to take like you know some AK 47s or some um, swords or machetes or RPGs or whatever it is or hand grenade? No, that don't work. Okay, it doesn't work at all. Right. So, so you need to know this, okay, that there is indeed a spiritual, uh, uh, we're engaged in what, a spiritual warfare. And I see these things most of the time because I minister to a lot of people uh, as, and you see it clearly, you see it very, very clearly. And this is why uh, when I'm bringing this message to you, I'm bringing it because I, have, I see firsthand of uh, uh, experiences of people who are faced with some of these you know, things. And... Um, uh, and uh, we don't know, we're not trivial about them, but they are very, very serious. And you have to understand that, you know, uh, uh, that in Christ and in Christ alone is where, is where the victory is, is where the victory lies, praise the Lord, over such forces in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. So this is not about religion here. <laughs> okay. All right. We're telling you stuff, you know, that is beneficial for you, you know, for all eternity. Praise God. All right. Amen. Okay, now, the other thing again I also want to mention here is, is okay, that um, the Bible says in the book of you know, Psalm 25, verse 14, Psalm 25, verse 14, it says that the secret of the Lord, the secret of the Lord is with them that do what, that fear him. And he will show them what his, what his covenant, the secret of God. Psalm 25, verse 14 is a very powerful scripture that um, the Lord gave to me, and, and I just love that scripture so much. It says that the secret of the Lord it's with those who fear him, and he will show them his what is covenant. The secret of the Lord. The Lord, God has secrets. Okay, yeah? Now, if you go to the book of Proverbs chapter 3, verse 32. Proverbs 3, 32 says, uh, Proverbs 3, verse 32. Praise God. It says that for the perverse person is an abomination to the Lord. The perverse person is an abomination to the Lord. 
But his secret counsel is with the upright. The secret counsel of the Lord, God Almighty, is with who? Is with the upright. Are you an upright person? What is the definition of an upright person? Praise God. An upright person is one who has given his or her life to Christ. You are made upright by Jesus Christ living in you because your sins have already been forgiven. So, then the secret of God is then revealed to you through the Holy Scriptures, by the grace of God. Amen. All right? And then through what we call the gift of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, the book of Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 29, I'm having to lay this foundation here so that some people want, so you understand that, you know, most of the things that are being said or in the Scriptures, they are not just for anybody. No. Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 29 says, it says that the secret things belong to, unto, our, unto the Lord our God. But the things that are revealed are for us and our children, that we may live, that we may, that we may do all the words of this law. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29. It said that the secret things belong to the Lord our God. But the things, the, those things which are revealed, the things that I speak to you on this platform, they are, they are secret things. Okay, they are revealed. Those things that are revealed belong to us. Is it? Is These are, these are, these are secrets. There's what you call in the world. You have what you call trade secrets. Uh, in certain organizations, maybe certain clandestine, certain you know occultic organizations, uh, you have what they call secrets. They have secrets. That's why they call them secret societies. Mm -hmm. They call them secret societies. Praise God. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Now, now, but when you become a child of God, now. I want to state this, please. All right. Now, we are all God's creation, but we are not all God's children. I've met someone. I met a lot of people say, "Oh, Clifford, we are all God's children." I said, "Oh no, sir. No, sir. Oh, sorry, sir. We're not all God's children. No. no yeah. Yes. Uh, you only become a child of God when you have accepted Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. When you are forgiven. When you have accepted. Uh, uh, when you have uh, uh, repented of your sins. When you have repented of your sins." You have acknowledged that you are a sinner, you have repented of your sins, you have asked God for forgiveness, and you have accepted Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, then you become what? A child of God. No, you're not just a child of God because you are, no, we are not, no. We are God's creation, but you become a child of God by adoption. Praise the Lord. I hope that, that's clear. Right, so now, when you become a child, like for some of you, for instance, within your family, you have, what you have secrets. I don't know the secrets, I don't know the things about your family. You don't know the things about my own family. Because you're not part of my family. That is my own, you know, immediate family I'm talking about here now. All right, yeah? Uh -huh. My biological family here. But you see, when you become part of the spiritual family of God, then God begins to reveal his secrets to you. Praise the Lord. Because you are now part of his family. You are now his child. So he now reveals the secrets to you. And the purpose of revealing those secrets for you is to empower you, is for you to have the dominion, is for you to have victory over the adversaries of our souls. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. The devil and his agents. Again, praise God. So, so again, the secret things belong to the Lord our God. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29. But the things that are revealed to you and I, okay, they are for us and for our children that we may do, live, that we may do all the words of this word of God. And by so doing, we have, a, we have life, a rich and a satisfying life, life in abundance and eternal life in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now, there was something that Jesus said in the book of Matthew, again, still on this particular topic as well. Mark, no, in the book of Mark chapter 4, Mark chapter 4 verse 11, Jesus said something, you know, to, these, uh, to the disciples when they came to him. He said, why do you speak to these people in parables? Jesus said to them, um, now verse 10, I read from verse 10 of Mark chapter 10. Okay, Mark chapter 10. Sorry, Mark chapter 4 from verse, I read verse 10 and 11. It says, that, But when he was alone, those around him with the twelve asked him about the parable. And he said to them, To you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But to those who are outside all things, but to those who are outside, all things come in what? In parables. Now there's a... Um, the Matthew's account of it, uh, which I um, haven't been able to, to fish out yet, but um, I'll probably, probably find it you know, uh, anytime soon again. 
Yes. Um, yeah. Okay. Yes. It's Matthew chapter thirteen. Yes. Matthew chapter thirteen. I read from verse ten. Matthew thirteen, verse ten. It says, "And the disciples came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables?" He answered and said to them, "Because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to them it has not been given." You see, some of the things that we talk about here. Um, to, 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 to a lot of people, it is all this nonsense. These guys are, this, I mean, I've been branded as being crazy and, and I've been branded, you know, that they should be reported, <laughs> you know, so, which is fantastic, which is good. So at least they're spoken some demons in some people and that's why they're reacting, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah, praise God. So, and um, these are spiritual things. The Bible says in the book of the First Corinthians, it says, you know, that um, spiritual things is foolishness, what, to a carnal person. You don't, you don't, you can't understand it at all, right? You can't understand it at all. But if you have been facing certain challenges in life, you know, you are, you know these things, you are under attacks, you have faced certain attacks, you know, then this is for you, okay, all right? No matter your religion, you see, so long as you're a human being, you're going to face, you will face the same attacks daily or weekly or monthly, whichever, you will face it. You will face it all the time. But the question is, how do you overcome those attacks that comes? Now, like I said earlier, it is true. This, this mystery, okay, this is the mystery of the kingdom, the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, before I go into the Revelation you know, which is very popular, Revelation 11, verse, Revelation you know, 12, 11. Now, I want to go to the book of you know, 2 Kings, 2 Kings chapter Chapter 3. Second Kings, I won't go to follow me. Go with me. Come turn with me to the book of Second Kings, chapter 3, please. Now, it's a very long read, but I I I, I, I don't know really where to start from in reading this because of the time. Okay, yeah, all right. Now, but but here were three kings: the king of Israel, the king of Edom, and the king of Judah. Okay, yeah, all right. They came together because the king of Moab had rebelled against the king of Israel. So the king of Israel, that was when Ahab died. So the son, you know, took over, but the king of Moab says, no more, I'm not going to sort of, you know, um, stand like, um, uh, you know, like uh, wool, ships and everything you know, to, 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 uh, to you as well, to you. And so he, 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 he rebelled against the king of, uh, of Israel. And as a result, he said, all right, okay, so we're going to fight you, we're going to come, we're going to come against you, we're, we're going to come with our armies and fight you and defeat you. All right, yeah. So, so the king of Israel, you know, um, uh, requested for the king of Mo, uh, the king of Edom and the king of Judah, Jehoshaphat, to follow him to this to, to, uh, to on this um, uh, uh, battle, uh, to this war. Now, um, the men they, they had some problems. Then Elisha prophesied. Now, Elisha the prophet prophesied that they were going to have victory, which which was which 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 happened. Now, but, but look at something that happened here. I'm going to read from verse, um, um, okay, I'll read from verse 21, please, because of, uh, of time and other things. I'll read from verse 21. It says, and when all the Moabites, this is Second Kings chapter 3, reading from verse 21, please make, it, make a note of it in your Bibles for those of you who have, uh, who have Bibles there. So now, it, now when, the, when all the Moabites heard that the kings had come to fight against them, all who were able to bear arms and all that were gathered and they stood at the border. Then they rose up early in the morning, and the sun was shining on the water. And the Moabites saw the water on the other side as red as blood. And they said, This is blood, and the kings have surely struck swords and have killed one another. Now therefore Moab to the spoil. So when they came to the camp of Israel, Israel rose up and attacked the Moabites, so that they fled before them, and they entered their land, killing the Moabites. Then they destroyed the cities, and each man threw a stone on every good piece of land, and filled it, and they stopped up all the springs of water and cut down all the good trees, but they left the stones of uh, Keharat Haraset intact. However, the slingers surrounded and attacked it. And when the king of Moab saw that the battle was too fierce for him, he took with him 700 men who drew swords, 700 men who drew swords, to break through to the king of Edom, but they could not. They could not, okay? 700 men that drew swords to break through to just one king, but they could not because of what? Because of the defense of God. Now, verse 27, look at where I'm going to now. It says, then he took, this is the king of Moabite now, but the king of Moab, he said, then he took his elder son, who would have reigned in his place, and offered him as a burnt offering. 
upon the wall, and there was great indignation against Israel. So they departed from him and returned by their own land. Now, the, the battle was fierce. The king of Moab, the Israel and the other, uh, and Judah, and, the, uh, and it, they had already defeated, decimated you know, the king of Moab and the Moabites already. But the only weapon, the only thing that you know, the, Moab, the king of Moab had, had he sacrificed there he, during at the time in the time in the face of in the heat of the battle, he sacrificed his son, offered him as a whole burnt offering to their God, and that's the Bible says you know, that there was great indignation against who against Israel and and his allies. What was that? It, because the blood of he, of a human being was used at that particular time in that battle. That blood was used, and that was why. It's the battle turned against Israel. Now, a similar battle ensued in heaven. Okay, yeah, all right. Now, but before I go there, before I go there, now I want to also bring about, bring to you as well, that in the book of the, uh, Exodus, okay, Exodus. So, 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 Exodus, let, let me go back a bit now. Let me go back a bit now. The, the, the Moabites. I mean, the Israel fled. They fled from that battle. Why? Because the blood of a human being, the, the king of Moab, the king of Moab, he sacrificed his only son, his eldest son, who was to reign in his stead. He sacrificed him. And because of that human sacrifice, there was, the Bible says there was great indignation against Israel. All right? Now, now the blood is so powerful. You must understand the blood is so, so, so powerful. Now, if the blood of a human being could cause Israel, all right, who was already, they had already won the battle, to turn against them, what about the blood of the Son of God? The blood of who? Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You see, we, we talk about the blood so, so much. Why? Because that blood is so powerful. It is, it is so potent. And I don't know how else to explain it, but it is so powerful, please. Friends, it is so powerful that when it is, when you understand, you know, the mystery of this blood of Jesus Christ, then you will start the victories that God will give to you. You'll be amazed by them. Praise God. These are what you call. These are mysteries. It's not. You don't go to some place or religious place and get it. No, it is a mystery revealed through the Holy Spirit. All right now. If we go to the book of you know, Exodus chapter 12, Exodus chapter 12, we see how God instituted or uh, during the plague, the last plague, okay, before he brought about the last plague, which was the death of all the, uh, the false bonds of the, of, of the Egyptians. He said to Israel, now, this is what you are to do. You are to sacrifice, you are to kill a lamb, okay, use the blood and put upon the doorposts and upon the lintels of your home. Now, Exodus chapter 12, verse 13 says, now, it says, now the blood shall be a sign for you on the, on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. So, the blood was used, but it was used by what? By faith. God told them to use it because he was visiting that particular nation, Egypt. That was the last plague, okay, to cause Israel, sorry, to cause Egypt to let his people go. Amen. Now, when the blood was utilized, they applied it upon the doorposts and upon the lintel of their homes by faith. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, it was by faith that Moses you know, did, did, done it. Okay. Hebrews chapter 11, very quickly. Hebrews chapter 11. He said, by faith, 28, by faith, Hebrews 11, 28, says, by faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he who destroyed the firstborn should touch them. It was by faith. It wasn't the blood of the animal, of the lamb that conferred immunity. No, but it was by faith. It was done by what? By faith. What does that mean? God said it, this is the word of God, and he believed it, they believed it, and they did it. And all the firstborns of the Egyptians were killed during that time, died, but none of the children of Israel were touched at all by the visitation of that particular uh, angel of death. 
that is the power of the blood. That is the power of the blood. Now, that was a shadow of what Jesus Christ was going to do for you and for me. Okay, yeah? The blood is not only for the cleansing of our sins, but the blood of Jesus Christ is a form of, also, secondly, also is a form of protection. It covers protection over you and your household and everything that concerns you. The blood of Jesus Christ. And then also it becomes also a weapon of warfare against the evil one and his evil angels. Now, very quickly, we'll go to the book of now, Revelation chapter 12, verse, uh, I'll read from verse 7. Revelation chapter 12, this is a, I've you know, read you know, this scripture many times and it's always bears repeating. You're not correct. So sometimes some people ask me, Clifford, why are you saying this again? I'll say, hey, listen, I need to say it to you because advertisement works on the power of repetition. The more you, the more they repeat it, the more you repeat it, the more you repeat it, the more it sticks. So I said to them, yeah, that's the reason why I have to tell you this all the time. The more I say it, the more I say it, the more I say it, the more it's going to stick to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless, praise, praise God. Now, Revelation chapter 2 verse 7 says, And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceived the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying, in heaven, now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. Now look at it now. It says, and they overcame him. By how? By the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. This is a weapon. The blood of Jesus Christ is a mighty weapon against Satan and his evil demons that are threatening and are destroying so many people's lives. The devil's plan is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Whatever your religious, whatever your religion, whatever your beliefs, you, you, is, is irrelevant. Okay, yeah? It's irrelevant. Whether you believe it or not, you like it or not, it is there. All right? So, and um, it's, uh, the devil walks on the cloak of ignorance. He uses ignorance to destroy people. So you don't know anything, all right, fine. Then he uses that not to torment no people as well. All right, praise God. Now, and that is why you need the knowledge of the word of God. The knowledge of the word of God. You need to have it to understand that you know, we are engaged in this particular spiritual warfare. Whether you like it or not. And it is only through the use of the blood. Just as the children of Israel used the blood. And that is why till now, up until now, the Jews, you know, the people of Israel, they celebrate the Passover. They celebrate the Passover. That could not just that, that could not just have happened. They still celebrating it. I mean, they celebrate it every year. Every year, the Jews still celebrate this Passover because it's something that happened back then. It has been passed over from generation to generation. Praise God. So you and I must understand that you know, it, that was a shadow of what Jesus was going to come to do for us. Uh, now that when situations are coming to your life, there is a stronghold. Now the Bible says in that Second Corinthians chapter ten, verse four. Second Corinthians chapter ten. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 10. It says that for, uh, if you read for verse 3, it says, uh, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are not ordinary weapons. They are not like your machine guns. They are not like your pistols. They are not like your RPGs. No, but they are mighty, what? In God. They must be in God, they are mighty in God, it's a true God, to the world, to the destruction, pulling down, destruction of strongholds. What are these strongholds? They are different kind of strongholds. Every individual person that is really, certain people are battling with certain things, and that is what you call a stronghold. I mean, just last week, you know, again, you know, while out, uh, you know, minister to a fellow, again, who uh, was having, yeah, he was being involved in drugs and everything and alcohol and all the rest. You know, I mean, he came with a can of beer and met me while I was out there on the streets, you know, you know uh, uh, reaching out to people with the gospel. And, and I, you know, spoke to him and I, you know, you know, asked him what happened. He was just coming from his you know, son's you know, house where he was having coffee and everything and everything was okay. Immediately he left there. It's like, you know, he just, it's like a spirit of depression just came upon him and he was so, yeah, he, he just felt low because so many things have been happening in his life. 
and, and then all of a sudden he just went and started and get, got the beer and started to, to, to just to drink himself. A lot of people are facing problems. They're just looking for how to just you know, numb the pain to avoid to go in. But I called him, we sat down and talked with him and ministered to him and then spoke to him and then prayed for him. That person, this man, who is the stronghold is, is the alcohol. So that could, that's a stronghold. Okay, yeah? Uh -huh. Alcohol, drugs, so he has already been released from that. So I prayed for him and then day after praying for him, you see how there was still, you know, a, a bit of the um, um, uh, alcohol or the beer in the can. And I said to him, listen, you know, uh, Clint, can I chuck this away? He said, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, I don't need it anymore. I don't need it anymore. I'm fine right now. I'm fine. And then he went and I took it and I, right in front of him, poured it away because he didn't need it anymore because he had been delivered. Then, you know, the next day he said to me, Man, I'm, I'm hungry. I need, I need food. I need food. I'm hungry. Okay, and that is the sign of deliverance. This guy, I need to go get a burger. I said, okay, that, go ahead, go ahead. Because the one, the previous, you know, other week again, I prayed for someone like that as well. After praying for him, it was, because all the while he was just drinking, 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 nothing. And after praying for him, you know, he was delivered. And right, he said, man, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I need to eat food. Okay, I have to buy, stop by, you know, McDonald's, and bought my burger and everything, you know, to eat. So what am I saying? That, you know, that these fellows were on a stronghold. Some other people, they are on that. Some, some people can't just, they, they, they find it very difficult to, to know, to, to serve God. Certain people are battling with certain things. And rather than, you know, they, and they're looking for solution to these things. But you see, this is why the weapon of the blood of Jesus Christ is what we use, is one of the weapons. I talked about the weapon of the, of the name of Jesus, the, the word of God, and I'm talking about the weapon of the blood of Jesus Christ, which can be, which is used against those things, against those forces that are holding, you know, a person in bondage in the name of Jesus Christ. And when it is utilized, trust me, you would always have the victory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Victory is guaranteed. Victory is guaranteed the same way as the angels of God used the weapon of the blood of Jesus. And the Bible says they prevailed over the devil and his age and, 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 and the angels that, were, uh, that rebelled. In the same way you and I, you will prevail, okay? You would prevail and you will have victory over satanic forces that are constantly bombarding you and your families in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Why? Because you have used what? The blood. Now, don't forget that you know, the Bible says you know, that in the book of Le 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 Leviticus chapter 17 and 11, it said that for the life of the flesh is in the blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11. Now, so when you say in the blood of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus, I release the blood of Jesus as a weapon against you. You forces, you satanic forces, I release the blood of Jesus against you. What are you doing? Jesus is being called up. You are invoking the blood. You are invoking the name of Jesus Christ into action. And guess what? His name never fails. That name Jesus never fails. That name Jesus never fails. And that is why, listen, I need to say to you all, especially those of you of a, of, of a different religious in the faith, please listen to me very well. Jesus and Jesus alone, he was not a prophet. But he is the son of God. He is God. And that is why when his name is mentioned in faith, it brings about deliverance. It brings about what? Victory. All the time. It never fails. It never fails. It never fails at all. Why? Because of the power in that name. The Bible says that, you know, and God has given unto him a name that is greater than every other name. That at the mention of that name, at the mention of that name, every knee must bow. Every knee bows to that name bow to the authority in that name. Hallelujah. Praise God. So you must understand that this is not, we are not in a religious contest with you. No. But the, the, the God has made it such that he has given that name. He has given the name of his son, Jesus Christ. He has given, he has such, such authority. The Bible says, you know, Jesus in the book of Matthew chapter 28 verse 18, says, it says all authority, all, all, not some, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. And that's what he said. That is what he said. So that is why in using this name, the, of the power in this name, Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ, you are always guaranteed of victory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Why? Because there is a stronghold that are holding many. Strongholds holding very many. We live in a world right now of the internet and Google and everything, you know, oh yeah, well, you don't need God, everything, oh, you don't, you don't need God, no. I mean, I see people, I meet people all the time, and I pray for them. 
praise God. I mean, this, I mean, it's sometimes you, you, you hear certain things and you, you see that, you know, it's, you see that this devil is a very bad, wicked devil. Honestly, very, very wicked. Terrible. But you have, but it is only through the knowledge of who? Of Jesus Christ. That is how you can defeat him. And defeat him and his, and his cohorts in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that's in the Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. It says, For the weapons of our warfare are not kind of but are mighty through God, to the pulling down, another translation says, for the destruction of what? Of these strongholds. Casting down what? Imaginations. The King James says, casting down what? Imaginations. Like I said you, the other day, imaginations are. Uh, it says casting out imaginations and every high thing that exhausts itself against the knowledge of God. Imaginations, things like, you know, it says, oh, uh, there's no God. Um, atheism, oh, evolution. Forget about it. There's no such thing as God. Casting them down. You cast them down. That's what we don't, you know, yeah, we, we don't engage people as such, you know, in such an argument. No, 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 we don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't engage them because we know that, you know, they're, they're under a, whole, a, a bondage. Okay, we are under a bondage, so we don't, we don't, we don't um, engage such, no, but rather we are praying for you. We are praying for them in the name of Jesus Christ, that they will be delivered and they will be set free from that particular imagination that is holding them. The imagination of atheism, humanism, athe agnosticism, anything that, ex that is exalting itself against the knowledge of God in the life of anybody or in your life, in your family, in the lives of those people that you know, God has called us to reach. We are casting them down by the blood of Jesus Christ today in the name of Jesus Christ. So the blood of Jesus Christ is so potent. You mention that blood, you utilize it as a weapon. Now, you can't use that weapon unless, of course, you have been trained. You have received Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. I did say to you guys, you know, sometimes when I was you know, doing this, this teaching on the on significance of the blood of Jesus Christ, you know, part four, which I please, I do want to encourage you all again to go there and watch it again. You know, a couple of years back, you know, somebody gave me, you know, a, a, I, I held a handgun, a handgun in my hand. A pistol, a handgun, I held it. It was so heavy. And when I held it, I became afraid. I became afraid. I wasn't a born-again Christian then. I was afraid of it. I was afraid of it. You know what I mean? So, and, and, and that is why you don't give a gun to somebody who is not trained to use it. And that's why all the guys in the, in, in, uh, in the police, you know, like, like, like for instance, here in the UK, for instance, I uh, uh, don't know about the country where you are, but in the UK here, for instance, it's not just any police officer that carries the handles a gun. No, there are people who are specialized, they go training, they are trained, they do this training like on a weekly basis. They, they, they have to be trained on the use of these uh, 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 weapons. Praise God. Hallelujah. So the, for you to be able to fight this formidable enemy that is destroying the lives of people. You need to be born again, my friend. What does it mean to be born again? It means that you need to repent of your sins. You need to surrender your life to who? To Jesus Christ. You need to ask God for forgiveness, first of all. You need to then accept him as the savior of your soul. Savior of your soul from what? From sin. And he becomes what the Lord of your life, the master of your life. What does that mean? That means he's the one that now you are accounted, to, you are accountable to. You don't just do things anyhow. No, you, you follow him. You start to live for him. You start to live for him. Why? Because he is the one that saved you from what? From, from the power of, of sin. Amen. And that is how you then have it. And then you then have the, you then have the power to continue to use the word of God to continue to use the weapon. They are weapons. These weapons are available to use, but they are available to you only if you are a born again child of God. Praise the Lord. That is why you cannot see uh, a, a, a policeman here in the UK carrying a weapon that he has not tested, he has not been trained in. He has not been trained in. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right, yeah, so you have to have been trained by it. Now, you know, uh, uh, there's, uh, yeah, you have to have been trained in the Word of God. You have to know the Word of God. You have to continue, but be in Christ. Don't give up. Continue, because you are, uh, your prayers and my prayers are very are avail much. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, so, I mean, so if we look at, you know, Isaiah chapter 49, verse 24, Isaiah 49, verse 24, it says, Shall the prey be taken from the mighty? or the lawful captives, or the captives of the righteous be delivered. Even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible be delivered, for I will contend with him who contends with you, and I will save your children. So many people have become prey 
to these spiritual forces. Many people don't know these things. Many don't know. You know, so and um, it, it takes the grace of God, my friend. It takes the grace of God <laughs> for for um, for you to understand these things and know that God loves you so much. He doesn't want you to be harassed all the time by this evil devil. He wants you to live a good and a satisfying life, abundant life, eternal life is your portion. But you can only do that and he can only fight for you when you surrender totally to him. You can't fight these forces. Most of you have nightmares. Most of you have certain things you are struggling with. Most of you have you know, certain addictions that you are still hold, that is holding you and you are, you, are, you, are, you are in bondage to these things. And I want to, you know, I mean, the, so, 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 someone said to me that there's, there, there, that there are almost, almost um, the, the amount of pornographic sites, websites, they are just almost about, almost in, they are in millions. Pornographic sites are in millions. And many, many are held bondage to these things. It's a stronghold. You that you're watching. Nobody sees you. But you are, you are in bondage to this thing. It's a stronghold. Some of you, after watching, you will feel dirty. Some of you, why? why? The Bible said that this, it says, pray that you do not fall into temptation. It said that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So you need help. You need the help of Jesus Christ to help you. He alone is the deliverer. And it is through this weapon of the blood because you have been held. You have been held. Once you commit sin, you already started sinning already. Whatever it is, you have been engaged in one kind of you know, sexual relationship or the other. You are, that is not, you are not, you are not married. When I mean marriage here, I'm talking about a man and a woman. That is the only marriage that's recognized by God. And that's the only marriage in here. Praise God. You are already, you are, you are involved in so much. I say this because I see, I, I, I minister to people and I know. I mean, one time I was ministering to a, to a fellow. He didn't tell me. He didn't listen to him, pray for him. And the Lord spoke to me and said to me, tell him, ask him about what's, about, you know, his addiction to pornography. And I said, hey, hello, my friend, please. I had to stop the prayer. I said, please, my friend, what are you having problems with pornography? He bowed, he, he, had, he just bowed his head down. I had to pray for him to be delivered from that. That is a stronghold against this particular fellow. So many other things, so many other things again have been are holding certain people. For some people, it is drugs holding them. For some others, it is pornography holding them. For some others, it is a stronghold. For some others, it is masturbation holding them. For some others, it is fornication holding them. For some others, it is adultery holding them. For some others, it is you know stronghold of you know telling lies holding them. For so different you know strongholds, but whatever the stronghold may be, there is a weapon to destroy those strongholds. Whatever you are, we are not condemning you. Please understand this. We do not condemn you. God does not condemn you at all. But he wants you to know that he is there to save you. He wants to save you. He wants to deliver you. He wants to set you free in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. I mean, I spoke to a fellow, you know, like that before one time. And I was saying to him, and the Lord spoke to me clearly. I said to me, this fellow is, you know, having a problem, you know, uh, with masturbation. And I called him. I said to him, hey, listen, my brother, are you having this particular problem? He looked at me and says, how do you know? I said to him, you see, that the Lord spoke to me and told me that you're having this problem and he wants to help. He says, nobody knows this. It's a secret. Nobody knows. How did you know? I said, well, the Lord spoke to me and he said to me to tell you that he loves you very much and he wants to deliver you. He wants to, save, he wants to help you and set you free from this bondage. And he asked me, is there any other thing that the Lord said to you? I said, no, that's just the thing the Lord said to me. And it was when the, Lord, when the guy submitted to, to, to my prayers for deliverance, that's it. And since that day, this young man has been on fire for the Lord. So these are strongholds. And the name of Jesus Christ has been applied right now. Because of time, the blood of Jesus Christ has been applied right now. And the word of God has been applied. These are weapons that we use to fight in this particular spiritual battle. Whatever challenges you're facing, understand, whoever you are, that there is a mighty weapon 
That is the weapon of the name of Jesus, the weapon of the word of God, the weapon in the blood of Jesus Christ. They never fail at all in the name of Jesus Christ. So you can defeat an invisible enemy, but you can do that by the invincible one. The invincible one is who? Is the Lord of hosts, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Through him, you can defeat you know, whatever it is that is you know, standing against you know, your destiny and your life. So I want to please you know, round up right now. And I want to please you know, open this to you. Do you have peace in your life? Are you facing challenges in your life? Well, we all do. I do. But guess what? I have he who helps me. He who fights my battles for me. I have the weapon of the word of God. I have the weapon in the name of Jesus Christ. I have the weapon of the, of, of, of the blood of Jesus. What do you use? What do you use? Are you having to you know, um, use alcohol to numb your pain, to numb these, the, the issues? Are you having to use tobacco to smoke, smoke your, your lungs out to try to stop these things? No. What are you using? Are you going by religion? No. But it is only by salvation. It is only when you come into a relationship with God. When you accept that, no, you cannot do this on your own. Yes, you can't fight this. I mean, you'll be stupid. You'll be crazy to say, I'm going to fight and all this. No, you, you, listen, you just, you... I mean, the people, suicide, suicide thoughts. Suicide thoughts have, 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 you know, self I mean, all these things, they are there. But Jesus tonight can set you free. Jesus tonight can help you. Jesus tonight. If you call out to him, the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 10, verse 13, it says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can be saved right now. Just looking at time right now. I'm so sorry, we've gone ahead of time over time. You can be saved right now by you just know surrendering to Jesus. The, you can't fight this battle on your own, my friend. Jesus is here to save you. He's here to help you. He wants to, he wants to come and fight for you. And then you will hold your peace. The Bible says in the book of you know, Exodus chapter 14, verse 14. Exodus 14, 14. It says, I will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Exodus 14, 14. Why don't you allow he who created that devil fight for you? Who is God over him fight for you and you just hold your peace in the name of Jesus Christ. That can be yours now. Just join me in this prayer right now. If you've never given your life to Christ before or you have and the pressures of life have choked into Jesus out of you, you're not really come, you're, serving, you're not really following Jesus. Now I want to just pray for you. Or you know in your heart of heart that you're not really in right relationship with God. I want to pray for you right now. Okay, right? So just bow down your heads right now. And let us pray together right now. Yes, just bow down your head. Humble yourself. There's nothing to be ashamed of. But you have nothing, you have nothing to lose. But you have eternity to gain. You have he who is greater than all gods. Who is the God of all gods. On your side fighting for you. Every time of the way. I just want you to just humble yourself right now. And ask right now God for forgiveness. He's willing to forgive you. And when, if you are willing to ask him for forgiveness. Just pray this prayer, simple prayer after me. And mean it in your heart. And let us just pray right now by in faith. Say with me, dear God. Yes, dear God. I come to you today. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I have sinned against you. I have broken your laws. I'm very sorry for them. I have done them all in ignorance. And now I know that it has given the devil a foothold over my life. Please forgive me. Once again, I did them all in ignorance, Heavenly Father. Forgive me. Wash me clean of my sins which I've committed against you with the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. I believe that Jesus Christ, your only begotten son, came into this world 2, 000, over 2,000 years ago, died on the cross for me to save me from sin and its consequences. And on the third day, you raised him from the dead, that I might be justified as if I've never committed any sin. And so I receive Jesus Christ right now into my heart to be my savior from sin and the Lord of my life. I repent of all my sins and I refuse to go back to carry on in that way in, in, in the sinful lifestyle I was living. But I choose to follow you now, Jesus. I receive the Holy Spirit to live a victorious and a successful Christian life. Loving you, Jesus. Following you, Jesus. And living for you, Jesus. All the days of my life. Thank you for answering my prayers. 
In Jesus' name I have prayed. Amen. Amen. Well, congratulations, please. I'm just going to pray for you right now. Father, I want to thank you. The Bible says that with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Thank you, Father, for these ones who have prayed this prayer. Lord, I pray, Father, for them right now, oh Lord. There is, the Bible says that there is great joy in heaven over once another repents. Thank you, Father, for this one person, Lord, who has repented of his or her sins right now and has accepted you, Jesus, as Savior and Lord. I give you thanks, O oh Lord. Thank you, Father. They are not longer under condemnation at all, but they have been translated into life, O oh Lord. The Bible says, Who had delivered them from the power of darkness and translated them into the kingdom of the Son of His love. Father, we thank you for translating these ones now into the kingdom of, your, of the Son of Your love in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that all things have passed away. Lord, now, O oh Lord, they have a new life in Christ and everything has become new. I pray, Lord, that you keep them, bless them, protect them, watch over them, O oh Lord. Direct them, O oh Lord, even where to fellowship, where to worship as well by your Holy Spirit, in the name of that they will grow in the knowledge of God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I cover you and your families with the blood of Jesus Christ, that you will remain covered and protected even unto the day of Christ, unto all eternity, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for answered prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Congratulations. Congratulations. You have now become a member of the family of God, and I, and I say congratulations. You are my brother, you're my sister, wherever you are, all right, irrespective of your, uh, wherever you come from, okay? You are now my brother, you are now my sister, and we love you to be it in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, please no, ensure that no, you are able to go to a Bible-believing church. It must be a church that preaches about Jesus, that honors the Holy Spirit, and also, you know, honors, the heaven, honors our Heavenly Father. That is where you should be. You must go there. Please go there to learn. Don't just go only on Sundays. You must be part of the Wednesday or whatever Bible study. You must be part of it as well, okay, so that you can grow you know, thereby as well in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, please, I want you to just know, if you don't have a Bible, please feel free to write to us, send us an email, send us a text message or whatever it is via any of these platforms, and I'll be happy to send you a Bible or, and any other materials that will help in your work with God, in your work with Jesus Christ. Now, very quickly, because of time, please, now join me. There are so many people out there. I mean, listen, you know, it's, it's so, listen, Jesus said, the Bible says that Jesus, Jesus came, he said, the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. That is one of the uh, main, uh, 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 main thrusts of this ministry. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. I want us right now to just join faith together. Let us pray right now for those sinners out there right now. You and I were once sinners. I was once a sinner. Let us pray for so many people like you. They don't know me. I mean, see, I, when I was in sin, I didn't know what I was doing. So you and I, let us stand in the gap right now. Stand for everybody right now. Let's begin to pray. Lord, save sinners right now. Through your word, even through this message, O oh Lord, through the daily post, O oh Lord. Father, we pray right now. We plead the blood of Jesus over the strongholds, Father, that are holding many people in bondage right now. We release the blood of Jesus over them right now. We come against you, strong man, over their lives. We destroy your hold over this, over this one in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for our loved ones. We pray, Father, for, O oh Lord, our acquaintances. We pray, Father, for our friends. We pray for our colleagues. We pray for our neighbors. We pray, Father, for those in our communities, O oh Lord. Father, we pray right now, we ask, Lord, touch them. We send the word of God to you. We send, we come against every strong man, every stronghold that is holding them in bondage. The evil imagination, the imagination that is keeping them in bondage. Father, we overcome that imagination. We cast it down. We destroy it right now by the weapon of the name of Jesus, by the weapon of the blood of Jesus, and by the weapon of the word of God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says also in the book of you know, Hebrew chapter 4 verse 12, it says that the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two, any two edged sword. Peace to the dividing of son of son spirits. We pray, Father, for those, O oh Lord's uh, people, Lord, who have been just been held uh, oh, oh, by this by these forces, oh Lord, uh, uh, standing against them, their salvation right now, as they as they engage with your word, oh Lord, right now, as they engage with your word, Father, we decree right now, that word will pierce through, divide that evil spirit from them, separate them from them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we want to say thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father, for salvation of souls, oh Lord. For this purpose, Jesus Christ, you came. You came to seek and to save that you just lost, oh Lord. Father, we pray, Father, for everyone right now, tonight, oh Lord, that people, sinners be saved. To Lord, Lord, they be saved and come to the knowledge of you, Jesus. Lord, the greatest miracle is the miracle of salvation of the soul of a man. Oh, I pray right now, oh Lord, Father, save them. We pray right now, we join faith together as your children, oh Lord, as the as 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 as, as kingdom citizens and kingdom children. We pray tonight, oh Lord, Father, save many, oh Lord, save them wherever they are right now, oh Lord, cause them, oh Lord, even when they are watching, you know, on their on their on their social media, oh Lord, that this 
feet, O Lord, will come up and will touch them, O Lord, and they will be touched. They will be saved in the name of Jesus Christ. We give you thanks, Lord. We trust, O Lord, that you have done it already. We give you thanks because, O Lord, you said you sought for a man who was standing in the gap. Lord, we're standing in the gap tonight, O Lord. Father, for people in our nations, O Lord, that they be saved. They will come to the knowledge of the truth. We give you thanks, Lord, for doing it. We say thank you and thank you again. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Well, you are blessed. Thank you very much. And uh, again, thank you so much you know, for uh, you know, joining us in this prayer uh, for, uh, for sinners. Okay, all right? And uh, please, we need to be doing that. That should be your, um, that is our preoccupation. As born again Christians, we need to be praying for others to be saved. You know, there was a post I put out there. Jesus says, no, judge not that you, not be, that you will not be judged. Condemn not that you will not be condemned. Forgive and you shall be forgiven as well. So, you know, for us as Christians, look, he said, we don't condemn you. All right? I was once a sinner, so I know. So I don't condemn. But, you know, we, uh, my responsibility is to keep praying. Is for us to pray and to spread the gospel. It is only through the gospel that people will be saved. All right? It's through the word of God, the knowledge of the word of God. That is why we are constantly, we are relentless in uh, uh, um, um, uh, Posting these things all the time, you know, sponsoring it all the time, and, and, and I thank God that, you know, it's reaching many. People have been touched by the Word of God and want to see more people being reached, you know, as well with the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you so much, and I thank you so much, you know, for being a part of this service again today, you know, and um, I know that many of you, I know some of you, many of you, I do not know you, but please, my encouragement to you is, okay, love this Jesus. It's the greatest thing that's ever happened to my life, trust me. And it's the greatest thing that will ever happen to your life as well. Okay, love him, love him, because eternity is in him. Please don't forget we meet on Friday as well, where we're still talking about you know, Jesus is the only way. Jesus is the only way. You don't want to miss it at all. You don't want to miss it at all as well. I'm bringing more revelations as the Lord is giving it to me about Jesus Christ being the only way. So please make sure you tune in 7 p.m. GMT, okay, and you would not regret it at all. Please, we don't waste time here. We always you know, spend quality time in God's presence again. Praise the Lord. Once again, I am truly grateful to God for your patience and for your loyalty, especially for those of you who tune in you know, week in, week out. The Lord bless you abundantly in the name of Jesus Christ. I look forward to seeing you again on Wednesday. Until then, have a wonderful evening. Have a fantastic and a profitable and a fruitful week, a victorious week as well by that, at that as well. And I look forward to seeing you again on Wednesday, on, on Friday. And, and, and uh, if you can make it on Friday, any other time again. But try, make it on Friday. God bless you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you.